Hey, how it's going guys? In this video, we are going to build an agentic rag using Langgraph. So if you look at here on my screen, I have this GitHub repo, of course, which is already available on my GitHub. It's called Langgraph Agentic Rag. Uh, rag is an acronym for Retrieval Augmented Generation that automatically basic, you know, corrects your retrieval errors using Langgraph and uh, it uses FAST for vector storage, right? So the idea behind here is that most of the time when you're working with naive rag, okay, where you don't have a very intelligent way of finding out the retrieval errors and then uh, try to uh, correct it and again re-retrieve re it, then it becomes a problem, right? You don't get the uh, right set of information uh, in your retrieval process. That's the fundamental problem with rag, right? And rag uh, fundamentally has been, of course, is, is, uh, you know, named after uh, Facebook AI lab where they created this paper in 2020 uh, or 2021. But after that, uh, you know, we have been working with naive rag or hybrid rag and so on and so forth. But this self-correcting retrieval is a very important step if you want to build a very good rag system. And Langgraph is one of the best choices when it comes to uh, orchestrating this entire agentic thingy because Langgraph is an orchestration framework for building agentic applications, right, or agentic systems. Uh, in this application that you're going to see, of course, we're going to look at the CLI version of this. We are using FAST for vector storage. So RAG basically have two processes or two steps rather, you know, retrieval and a generation. A retrieval happens through an embedding model where you use to create embeddings and store that into a vector database. And then you use some kind of uh, approximate nearest neighbors or ARN algorithms to find out similarities between different vectors. Uh, and once these are retrieved, right, some uh, vectors in forms of chunks or page content, whatever you call it, and then it's given to uh, LLM for generating or synthesizing the responses. That's how it works. So this identic rack system has these features. It has a self-correcting loop, uh, automatically detects and fixes poor retrieval quality. So the grading also comes up. If you look at your document grading over here, uh, LLM based relevance scoring before generation. Module decoup decoupling. So the way we I have written this is a very modular way. So written the classes where you can just replace Redis with Pinecone, Pinecone with QDRent, OpenAI with Anthropic, and so on and so forth. So from an algorithmic algorithm standpoint, we have self-correcting retrieval, and that happens through document grading, and it rewrites the query. That's what it is, right? So I'll show you that in a bit. So if you look at it on my screen, now we are on Windsurf. So I'm using this IDE named Windsurf. Feel free to use VS Code, PyCharm, Cursor, whatever, doesn't matter, right? Now, if you look at from left to right, this is a very high level architecture of this entire agentic rag that I'm showing you. So we have a start and then we have an agent. Agent is going to retrieve some sort of information and then it grades the documents. Documents are nothing but each chunk that it's, it's basically not the chunk, but each page content. Uh, is basically called as a document. So basically grade the documents over here. And then it sees if it's relevant, then gives, gives this to LLM and LLM basically generates the answer and the loop is ended. Okay. But let's say if the documents that have been retrieved and after grading, if it's not relevant, then the agent will rewrite the query, right? Because uh, there are ways you can do multi-query decomposition just for the sub-atomicity, right? You basically decompose the queries or you rewrite the queries uh, uh, in different ways and then can go and retry uh, to retrieve the thing and grade the document and find out the relevant answer. This is a high-level understanding of this entire process, right? This is an overview, uh, which, is, which is a bit more detailed. So if I look at this one, right? We start. Then we have an agent node. So we are using Langgraph. Langgraph is basically based on graph. So uh, when you work with graph, you have uh, ages and you have nodes, right? That's what you have. So ages are basically all the uh, connectors, you can say, like the connects or the integrations. Now node is where, you know, it, it, node is the mother load. So if you look at this agent node, we have this agent node with basically the decision-making node for us. Now, when you work with agentic rag, 
the vector part, the database part is used as a tool. Everything that agent uses it, it's a tool, it's through a tool. So agent are basically three things that it basically uses. One is LLM, one is they can be multiple tool, multiple models, and it can also have memory and other things uh, in place. So if you look at the tool call, we are using fast vector store for retrieving the vectors, and that's our retrieve node. So, so far we have agent node and retrieve node. Now we have a great document for relevancy that basically checks the relevancy. And if it's relevant, then it generate node will be used for producing the answer or generating or synthesizing or augmenting, whatever you call it, it's your choice. And if it's not relevant, then it will rewrite the query. So we have a rewrite node query transformation. And then again, it goes back and try the same way. Now, so the graph.py file where the basically it's your state machine, the graph.py where we have uh, our nodes and ages, grading logic, and then all the three nodes, agent, rewrite, and generate, right? And then we have some configs where we're gonna keep our ENVs and our models and embeddings and so on and so forth, right? Now the retrieval part is very simple. We have a document ingestion and a fast vector store. So let's have a look at that now. So left-hand side is my complete folder here that you see. Now, we have created a virtual environment in, the, in this .venv. We install all our dependencies. So I'm using UV to set up this project. So I'm using UV for this. So I'm using Langchain, Langchain OpenAI because we are using OpenAI GPT-40 mini model. Feel free to use any model, does not matter a lot. Langchain community, because we're gonna use some open source modules and dependencies. We have Langgraph as an orchestration framework, Python.env to manage the credentials and secrets. Tick token just for all the token related thingy, fast CPU as a vector store. Fast is created by Facebook AI lab, fair lab. And then we have beautiful SU4. Maybe you don't need that. Uh, maybe we need it. I'll, I'll tell you why, why we need it because of the data source that we are using. Let me show you the folder source folder. Source folder is the main folder. Now within source folder, we have two subfolders, agents and config. So the config is pretty simple. So in config, we have our openai.py file where we are saying that, okay, use openai embedding model and openai chat LLM, okay, GPT-40 mini. Chat openai is basically, uh, you know, it's a class, it's a module where you can use that, the LLM into a chat template kind of a format. So it's, it's basically further fine tuned for chat thing. So we have a model, temperature is set for randomness, creativity, and whatever. And we are getting our OpenAI API key. Same goes with embedding. We are using the embedding model over here. So that's for our OpenAI.py. Now settings is pretty simple. We are using load.env, uh, and then we are just getting OpenAI API key, which is in my .env file. This is our config. Now after config, we have agents, and within agents, we have three files, ages, nodes, and graph. So if you look at this node thingy, now in the node thingy, we are using pre-built, if you look at this lang graph, pre-built, and then we have lang chain core messages, human message and system message. First thing is we are creating an agent node. Now we are giving tools access to this agent node and it can use LLM that coming from your config get LLM thing. And then we bind that. We have to bind the uh, tools. You can look at here LLM with tools and we use LLM.bind underscore tools. That's what we do. And then we are mentioning a state because guys, LangGraph is a stateful library. That's the beauty of LangGraph. You know, it comes up with a lot of uh, inbuilt features for state management, sessions management, uh, scratch, scratch padding, uh, in, inbuilt memory storage and so on and so forth. So that's the beauty of LangGraph. LangGraph is something that you guys should learn. Okay, now we have our create rewrite node here that we are using an LLM. We have a rewrite prompt. Look at this rewrite prompt. We are saying you are a query rewriter. Your task is to transform the user's questions into a more effective search query. And then we are relying on agent itself because let's say if I'm asking a question, I might not ask the question in the right way, right? And if agent can basically make that question into a bit more machine readable format. So it, I mean, the format is still re remains English, but into more of a machine readable words or terminology. So the effects uh, of attention goes higher, right? So that's what happens over here. And you can see that. 
and then create generate node and basically just using the generation prompt for generating the answer. So this is our nodes. Now, in ages, we have multiple things. One is your grade document that we discuss. Uh, you can look at this binary thingy. Documents are relevant to the question, yes or no. And there is a reasoning behind it. Please explain that why documents are not relevant. Because let's say, if we completely rely on this agentic thingy for uh, relevancy into some kind of regulatory industry like healthcare, pharmaceuticals, and finance, and entire BFSI, uh, explainability of the rejecting the query might become a bottleneck, right? So your leaders might ask, the governance might ask that, okay, why the hell is that happening? So in that case, you need some kind of explanation. And that explanation again comes from agent itself. So it might not be really, really uh, quantitative, I'll say rather. I mean, it's not quantifiable. It's difficult to quantify that. Now, the create great documents over here, as you see, we are going to have great prompt. Uh, uh, we have again you can read this document grader your job is to determine if the retrieved documents contain specific and direct information because we are building a rag so in rag is like it should have the nearest uh, similar vectors uh, with all the information so that's the priority uh, in this so this is what we have now graph is interesting so as i said right lang graph is based on graphs so we have to build the graph now when we are building the graph you can see we have a agent node rewrite node generate node and you have a great document functions and this is how you so basically it happens it basically it's a workflow you can also generate this diagram so you the workflow you can see the workflow we are adding the nodes 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 and there is a sent entry point which is for the agent in the top that you see and then there are some conditional ages so conditional ages where the uh, you know the grading document functions will come up because it's a conditional thing so this is how it works this is there now we have a retriever pi so i'll show you the retriever because i want to show you the source document as well so our our retriever looks like this very modular right as i said so we have an ingest document function where we are using web-based loader guys so in langchain community document loader we have web-based loader uh, here we get the docs docs are basically in a python list when you use langra for langchain and we are using a recursive character text splitter. It starts, it's a top to bottom approach. You start with you know, line breaks, breaks. So of course, paragraph and sentences and words and whatnot. Uh, and then we have a chunk size of thousand. Now, chunk overlaps would be anywhere between 10 to 25% of chunk size. That's what the industry says. So we have that as well. Now we get the embedding over here using the embedding model, which is like, let's say embedding three small or large. And we're using fast. You can also persist that. If you persist, it will create two files, .pickle and .fast files. And then we return the vector store. And then we are using the get retrieval tool to get that in as a tool. And we have a k equal to 4. So uh, that when we use the ANN algorithms, we are saying k equal to 4. Now, uh, main.py is where we have the thingy. So our these are the things we are using, guys, the data source. The question is, OK, what are we building rag on? Like, what are the data source we are using? So we are using this blog here. Uh, you can look at the uh, Lillian Wang blog, LLM Power Autonomous Agent, written a couple of years back, a very good blog that I have used. So I'm using this as a web source. You can use any other data sources if you want. It's your wish to do that. Uh, I'm doing that. You can look at here some ingesting documents into FAS. We are using the retrieval tool. And then we have some couple of questions. This is our sample questions. But you can change the questions and you can look at it. So let's run this and see what happens. I'll just make this a bit big. Now you can look at over here, right? I asked this question. Uh, so I, I ran this file. So it says initializing agentic rack system. And this is completely CLI based. I do have UI based similar solutions that I previously created. I'll give you that video link in description as well. I wanted to keep this completely in CLI. Okay, but very modular, so you can use it into fast API or wherever you want to use it. Now, it says ingesting documents into fast vector store, documents ingested successfully, building lang graph state machine, graph built successfully. So the graph is built, the identity system is ready. Question is, what are the key components of an AI agent? So if you look at this node, agent output, grading is no, so it does not go into the grading. The retrieve document discuss it gives you the reasoning of it because the reasoning I told you uh, is a comprehensive list, blah, blah, blah. 
and then node retrieve planning. Now the agent breaks down large tasks into smaller manageable sub goals. Now if you look at here that right this is interesting. So it's basically has the rewriting thing which gives you an output. What are the essential elements and functionalities of an AI agent? And then it gives you the output. Such a nice, such a nice way to uh, you know bring the atomicity over here, right? When you rewrite the query and get a better answer. So if you look at the final answer, it says the essential elements and functionalities of an AI agent include planning, memories, tool, natural language interface, blah, blah, blah. Right. So that's for the first question. Then we have the second question as well. How does prompt engineering improves LLM performance? Same goes for this. Okay. If I look at here, the, the query gets rewritten, prompt engineering techniques on the performance of LLMs. And it also generates this answer over here, like prompt engineering techniques significantly impact the performance of LLM. And it gives you some headers like zero sort, few sort, empirical science, benchmarkings, complex tasks, handling, and so on and so forth. So these are the questions that I tried on, but you can change the question. Of course, you can change the data source as well. If you don't want to use this particular blocks that I have been using it. Now, this entire uh, identity rag is built in Langraph. So it's already uh, on a level that you can start building POCs uh, using this, maybe not in the production directly, but POCs for sure, right? Now it's available on my GitHub repo. I'll give this link in uh, uh, description. Have a look at this. Uh, it's pretty good. Readme is pretty nice and clean. Uh, feel free to contribute if you want to contribute more. Here's the workflow. Agent receives questions. Retrieval happens. Grading happens. Decision point if generate, not relevant, and then generation. This is a state machine flow because Langraph is based on that. And here are some questions that you see, right? Now, this is what I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to show you that how we can build an agentic rag with self-correcting retrievals, document grading, and query rewriting in Langraph. Okay, uh, I do have other repos which are with UI as well uh, that you can also have a look at that. It's called maybe this as well, AI agent with MCP tools, or there's something called self-healing rag. That is something that you can also look at. Self-healing rag is also there. So self-healing rag uh, is also well appreciated. Already there are people using this repo. Uh, you can look at this, right? So we have same thing. So we have Heidi here, hypothetical document embeddings, uh, query decompositions, like I'm telling you about the atomicity of the question, C rag, which is the corrective rag thingy. So combine both the technologies, guys, to make a very powerful RAG system because RAG is something that you should now by master it completely. That's all for this video. If you uh, like the video, please hit the like icon. If you have not subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel, guys. That motivates me to create more such videos in your future. Please share the video and this channel with your friends and to peer. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.